We welcome you to historic Municipal Auditorium in downtown Kansas City for the 1999 USA World Team Trials. Three spots on the world stage are up for grabs. 18-year-old Alyssa Beckerman is poised to take one of them and earn her first trip to the World Championships. Elise Ray wants to earn that first trip to the Worlds as well, and she has looked the strongest of all so far this week in Kansas City. Here's how the top five stand after the first day of competition. However, Jenny Thompson, leading after the first round, has withdrawn from the event because of illness. She won't compete this evening, but Thompson has already earned selection to the world team. Hi again, everybody. Along with Bart Connor, I'm Chris Marlow. You know, one of the ultimate goals of any USA athlete, especially in gymnastics, is making it on to a world championship team. This year, three women have already qualified. In addition to the aforementioned Jenny Thompson, two other big-name American stars are in. And they, of course, are Kristen Maloney and Vanessa Atler, who, by the selection procedures, were entitled to petition right onto the World Championship team based on their past performances. Now, they petitioned because of injuries. Kristen Maloney has been dealing with a stress fracture in her shin, and she wants to save her legs for the Worlds in China. Now, Vanessa Atler has also been dealing with an ankle injury, but her situation is a lot more complicated because she shocked the gymnastics world after the U.S. Championships recently when she left her longtime coaches, Beth and Steve Rybacky. She'll go to China and compete in the Worlds. Where she will land when she comes home from China is up for grabs and no one's talking right now. Unlike Atler and Maloney, Jeanette Antholin did not compete at the national championships. She must earn her place at the Worlds here tonight. For more on that, let's go over to Kim Anthony. Kim? Well, Chris, Jeanette had a phenomenal first day of competition and tonight she will begin her competition on vault along with Morgan White who has had a uh, pretty tough week. She's been battling coughing episodes and bronchitis on top of the other pressures she faces here at the trials and she's been taking antibiotics but she has such a tiny frame that still the flu is definitely taking its toll on her body. We'll have to see if she's able to make it through all four events. We start our competition with 14-year-old Tasha Schweikert, the youngest gymnast in the competition. Hails from Las Vegas, Nevada. She had some difficulty in day one of the trials, only scored an 8-1-2, 8-7-1-2, pardon me, on this event. All right to the handstand, save it. Nice save, she almost fell the wrong way. Here's a release move, the reverse hecht. Nicely done. She scored a 9-4-5 at the USA Championship, so she has the potential to get a decent score on this event. Good start. Good for her, and a great save on that handstand on the low bar. Now, in order to get the maximum bonus for this move, she needs to land right in the handstand, and boy, did she. Now, it's not her intention to hold it for two seconds like the guys have to do, <laughs> but she did show how composed she remained and managed to put the handstand over on the right side. She made the release move and finished beautifully. Here now is Jeanette Antolin. She's 18 years old, born in Paradise, California, and she is the only sleeveless competitor that we will see tonight. <laughs> her coach, Don Peters, thinks that uh, because of her physique, that having sleeveless leotards makes her lines look a little bit longer. She's really powerful on this event. Good job. Okay. Very good vote. Okay. That was a gorgeous ball. There's her coach, Don Peters, who has coached many of the great U.S. gymnasts over the years. Just a reminder that in women's gymnastics, the competitors get two vaults, and it's the average of their two scores that count. And in this competition tonight, it's what they call competition two, which means they have to do two different vaults. They can be from the same family of vaulting. And in this case, that is a 9-9 start value. So typical for Jeanette Antolin, on most all apparatus, she has very high start values. And that's going to give her a chance tonight to stay among the top three and make that team. Come on, Nader. And she has really creative routines, some unusual moves, which we'll see tonight.
Now that ball should be based out of a 9-7 start value. Okay. Excellent. Excellent start. Excellent start. You want to get your stuff. First ball, darn good. 9-5-2-5 for Jeanette Anselin. So we'll take vault number two, average amount, and that will be her score. This is that Yurchenko style of vault, but she's going to turn onto the horse, front somersault with a half off of the horse. Nice technique as she shows on all the apparatus. Tasha Schweikert's bar score, 9-4-7-5. So Schweikert off to a good start. Let's move now to 18-year-old Robin Phelps, a 12th grader at Magruder High School. She'll be on bars. She's training with Kelly Hill at Hills Angels Gymnastics. She's been there a couple of years. For four years prior to that, she was in Cincinnati under Mary Lee Tracy. She's had some injury problems. That's why she's rather unknown at this elite level. At the 97 U.S. Championships, she had a stress fracture in her foot and was out. At the 98 Championships, she had a dislocated kneecap. So it's great to see that after coming back from those injuries, she was eighth this year at the USA Championships in the all-around. And it's good that she's finally getting a chance to compete at this level. All right, we are underway here in Kansas City, Missouri. The 1999 USA Gymnastics World Team Trials will continue. The 1999 USA Gymnastics World Team Trials are being brought to you by Aussie Hair Care. We do hair a little different. And by the Grand Am with solid form design. It's excitement, well built from Pontiac. The score for Jeanette Antolin, her average, 9-4-6-2. Antolin on vault, 9 4 6 2. Great start. Here is Jamie Dancher. She is 17 years old. Born in Canoga Park, California, now living in San Dimas. You want to talk about raw athletic power. This is an amazingly talented young athlete. Watch this vault. Man, she just flies so high and so far. Dancher currently in fifth place. Once again, we'll repeat all night long that the top three make it. Four and five do not. So she needs to move up. This is going to help her. This is what they call the Phelps vault. It's a 9-8 start value. And boy, her technique and mechanics are outstanding. Great body position in the air. This comes from a 9-8 start value. Outstanding. She is very dedicated. She drives three hours, five days a week to her gymnastics club. A three-hour commute in California. That's tough. Mm. Of course, that's only about seven miles in L.A., isn't it? <laughs> you got that right. She's trained by Beth and Steve Rybacki at the Charter Oak Gliders, Vanessa Atler's former team. Her second vault. Once again, outstanding mechanics. Now, this is out of a 9-6 start value. She had a 9-4-4-9 in day one. There's Steve Rybacki. I can, I can. Right. Robin Phelps on bars showing improvement from day one. Uh, posts a 9 3 1 2. 9 3 1 2 for Phelps. Next up on bars, here's 16 year old Annabeth Eberly. Scored only an 8 7 2 5 in this event in day one here. She'll hope to do a little bit better today. She comes into this performance with a routine that has a start value of 9.3. Nice catch on that release move. She trains out in Reno, Nevada at Stars Gymnastics. And currently in ninth place. Looking to make a move. Derek Mullenbeck is her coach. Oh, boy, she had to really pull that around to finish that double somersault forward at the end.
take a look at this pirouette to the top. That's what they call a blind change right into a double front somersault, a tough landing, and showing what a good athlete she is. She was way under-rotated, and yet she managed to find the floor and stay upright. Good going. Jamie Dancher, score on vault, 9.418. Solid. Set on vault, she's 16 years old. Trains at the Cincinnati Gymnastics Academy under Mary Lee Tracy. She had a rough night in day one, dealing with that flu. Good for her. That's the best vault I've seen her do in a while. She looked really weak the other night, and she didn't really want to talk about the fact that she was sick. And Mary Lee Tracy, her coach, said, go ahead. It's OK to tell them. Just about sick. everybody in Cincinnati has the flu this week, don't they? Uh -huh. Keep standing up. Stand up on the board. Stand up off of the horse. You can do it. You can do it. She has three terrific events. Vault is the one where she struggles the most because she just quite, doesn't quite have the power of someone like Jamie Dancher. But these mechanics are great. This vault comes from a 9-6 start value. It's called a Hristakieva, named after a famous Bulgarian gymnast. Look at that determination. Here's a young lady that just doesn't have the raw power some of the other gymnasts, but she makes up for it with that determination. She is not the youngest competitor, but she's certainly the slightest <laughs> or smallest, if you will. They don't list heights, but ball. she is uh, definitely diminutive. Not bad. Nice mechanics once again. The start value on that vault, or the degree of difficulty, is 9.5. Yeah, that felt better than the last time. Yeah. Too. Now, have you done everything you can do? Yeah. All right, let's do it ready for the next one. Good job. Morgan White. Got a 9-1-2-5 on her first fault. That one a little bit better? That was uh, nice, but unfortunately, the start value is a little bit lower, so I don't expect a better score for that. We're going to see her in her best events coming up a little later, particularly the bars. Annabeth Eberle, score on the Annabeth Eberle receives an 8-5-3-7. 8-5-3-7 for Eberle. The score for Morgan White, uh, 9118 on vault. All right, we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have more from Municipal Auditorium right after this. Welcome back to Kansas City, Missouri. There is Elise Ray getting ready for her uneven bar routine. It is her strongest event, and on the first night of competition, she got a 9837 on bars more than a full point higher than anyone else. Well, that's right. Elise Ray has a spectacular bar routine showing high level of difficulty and always keeping perfect form. That's her trademark, a 9.837. Now, another contender in day one was Alyssa Beckerman, a 9.7 for her on the bars, which is an event where she shines, but it was on the floor exercise, however, where she stumbled, scored only an 8.862, and her coach, Mary Lee Tracy, had some words about her mental concentration for that competition. Focus, but I, I Is Beckerman focused tonight? We will find out. We'll see her vault in a moment. Now we're ready for 17-year-old Elise Ray on bars. on bars. She is our leader. At the U.S. Championship, she was sixth in the all-around. She won the floor now exercise, but ironically, this, her best event, she fell from and didn't do well there. Please welcome Elise Ray. A huge score in day one here. Interestingly, she told us that she watered her routine back down. She's going to an easier routine for her 
and yet she can still manage to get a high nine on this. Watch this sequence here, toe on full pirouette. Now this next one is a hop full pirouette. Beautiful position. Just notice her toe point, her straight body line, clean form, and then watch the difficulty on the dismount. This is why she is an incredible genius. She has it all. Occasionally, you see a gymnast who's really powerful and acrobatic, but not necessarily clean. You have others that are really clean, but they can't do the big tricks. This young lady has got the whole package. This is a double laid out with a full twist. Look at the form in the air. Who's got the composure to point your toes in the middle of one of the most difficult moves you can do? Did you ever point your toes at anything? Uh, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> not as well as her. The older you get, the more your ankles are broken up and you can't point them very well. That is for sure. <laughs> All right, set for 18-year-old Alyssa Beckerman. Right now, she is holding on to third place. That would be good enough for the final spot on the world team if she hangs on. Once again, another Cincinnati gymnast here. This is a 9-5 start value vault. This is the event where she's probably the weakest. She has three really good events, bars, beam, and floor occasionally. Vault is where she struggles a little bit. Nice technique. Actually, that was very high. She needs to add a little more difficulty, perhaps another half twist to get a higher start value, but the mechanics on that vault are very good. Now for her second fault. She herself has been dealing with an injury. Had a sore wrist from an incident on the vault recently. Nice and clean. Hand. Start value only of a 9.3 for that particular vault. Perhaps because of the injury as well as yeah, playing it a little safe. Okay. Tighten Maybe up and a smart ready. move for all her. Right. Put your stuff over here all the way in the back. Go around this way. Elise Ray, her score on bars, very nice. A very clean routine, and that keeps her in the lead. Next on bars, 16-year-old Milan Dodd. Hails from Seattle, Washington. She's an 11th grader at Roosevelt High School. She competes for the Cascade Elite Gymnastics under Frank Lee. 12th in the all-around at the national championships. And she had a disaster on the bar yesterday. Let's see if she can make these inverts and pirouettes. Nice release. In day one, she scored a 7.8. Two times she missed pirouetting skills. Looks like she's gonna be in good shape today. better than 7.8. See that on her face. <laughs> so Milan Dodd, uh, quite frankly, a long shot to make the team. Coming into that routine in this rotation, 13th. Out of 14. Alyssa Beckerman's score on ball, 8.962. The average. That should be good enough to hold on to that crucial third spot. When we return, the double medalist, Amy Chow, will vault. Stay with us for that. Welcome back, Amy Chow. 21 years old now, 1996 Olympic team gold medalist. She received silver on bars. Right now, she's on vault. Just nine weeks ago, she broke her foot in a training accident and had surgery, so she's not doing the same difficulty that we normally see from her, but her mechanics were good on that.
There's her coach, Mark Young. I was speaking to her other coach, Diane Amos, and it's very interesting for Amy because she was so overshadowed by the Shannon Millers and Dominique Mochanos and Gary Strug on that 96 Olympic team. They said she's really enjoying the fact that she's a crowd favorite for the first time in her career, and that's inspiring her today. Beautiful push off the horse. She hasn't been doing her vaults consistently. Only a couple of weeks of hard training, landing on hard surfaces. She's been a member of two world championship teams. Interestingly, in 1995, she sprained her ankle two days prior to departure, which obviously hampered her efforts. Trying to somehow now find her way on ball. to one more championship team. She's in seventh place. And certainly the long-range plans for her are to make that Olympic team in Sydney. Absolutely. And she could help the U.S. team there a lot. Handspring Pike front with a half. Nice going. Very quiet and unassuming is Amy Chow. Let's go back to the bars. Here is Eric Dooley. She's 17 years old, originally from Silver Springs, Maryland. Dooley currently in 11th place. Watch this mount. It's a front with a half. And watch this second move coming up here. A free hip half turn to the high bar. Beautiful release move. Now she only scored a 7.75. She had a disaster in day one here. She's much more aggressive today. Hey, good for her. I asked her coach Kelly Hill about those two moves, the first one and the second one. And she said, well, I know they're not beautiful, but they do earn bonus points, and they are kind of <laughs> unique. <laughs> it's nice to see some other than cookie-cutter style gymnastics. Watch, this is a front with a half over the bar to a glide kip. And this transition is a free hip and a half turn to the high bar. Both of those moves earn her bonus tenths. Amy Chow's score on vault is in the average 8.906. Aaron Dooley on bars at 8.70. Strong comeback from day one for Dooley. That is the end of rotation number one. Elise Ray continues to be our leader at the 1999 USA Gymnastics World Team Trial. Stay with us. Welcome back to standings after rotation one. Elise Ray is our leader. Jeanette Antolin in second. Beckerman is third. Jamie Dancher has moved up to fourth. Phelps in fifth. Morgan White dropping to sixth. Schweikert in seventh. And Chow in eighth. Chris Marlowe, Bart Connor, and Kim Anthony. Welcome back to Kansas City, Missouri. Robin Phelps set and ready to go. Once again, Phelps in fifth place. She needs good performances all the way now, Bart. It's a pretty good event for her. She scored a 9.206 in day one. This should be a Yurchenko with a full twist. Start value of 9.5. She'll need a clean landing. Nice. Robin Phelps. Chatting with her coach, Kelly Hill. Nice technique on this. Onto the horse backwards. Not quite the same height that we saw from Marlene Stevens, but not bad. Over-rotated slightly. Boy, you have to focus on this vault because she's going to turn around off and go backwards onto the horse. Your timing has to be right on. Not bad. Now for her second fall.
Oh, great. This was the same style vault, but she added an extra half twist, which beefs up the start value from a 9.5 to a 9.8. <laughs> Kelly Hill says, nice going, young lady. Thanks. Next on uneven bars, Jamie Dancher. Dancher in fourth place has been performing well. She had to finesse her bar routine in day one here. A couple of elements she was off on, made a couple of good cover-ups. Oh, nice position right through the handstand. Gorgeous high release move. Man, can she fly. Oh, that's what she needed. <laughs> This is exciting to see her respond. Beth and Steve Rybacki. She scored a 9-2-2-5 in day one on this event. <laughs> a relief there because a couple of times yesterday she got caught in handstands and had to cover up, went the wrong way. This combination right to the handstands is important. And then, boy, does she torque that Ginger release move, fly away with a half turn. And what's amazing about it is how she kept terrific form throughout. On the vault, Robin Phelps on vault, 9268. Jamie Dancher's bar score is in, and it's a whopper 9662, an outstanding score. And now that puts the pressure on Beckerman. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, Morgan White on the bar right after this. Morgan White just turned 16 a few months ago, and it's been a coming out kind of year for her on the senior level, and she's pleased with the way it's worked out. If you would have told me last year that I would have had a chance of making the world team, it would have been hard for me to believe. So I've, I think I've improved a lot um, since nationals last year and um i've reached more expectations than i thought i could even i mean i've it's this year has been really great for me here is morgan white she has had a solid year and right now she is in sixth place after rotation one she dropped a bit she won the all-around at the Pan Am. She was third on the bars. Watch this. This is where she specializes. Watch this move, a full pirouette. And again, now in inverted giant swing, she's going to do what they call an endo. Nice mechanics. Scored a 9-4-8-7 in day one. Even that move, which is a little botched, is better. She's hoping to do a hop full pirouette. This is a good set. She's got more energy today. She was running out of gas, dealing with the flu the other day. She looks like she's got a little more in her fuel tank today. Pizzazz. Good routine. Good job. Good job. Even congratulations from Beth Rybacki, who said, yes, it was better than yesterday. This is an important element here, the laid-out double-back somersault. She hopes to keep her body stretched throughout, and that was one of the best ones she's done. Normally, she pikes down a little bit more and takes a deduction for a break in the body line. Good for her. The score for Morgan White on bars, terrific. 9-5-6-2. So a confidence builder for Morgan White. It's going to move her right back into contention. And her teammate, Alyssa Beckerman, is next. Once again, the top three here tonight go to Worlds. Beckerman currently in third. This is a very important routine for this young lady. I watched her in warm-up. She botched a couple of her skills. This is her favorite event. It can be her best event. She's very good at these pirouetting and invert-type skills. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's where she missed in the warm-up. Oh, she is really finessing this. This is nice. Mary Lee Tracy 
told her to focus better. She got through the difficult elements. All she has left is the laid out double back somersault. This is a clutch routine. Nice goal. She knows the dancer is right behind her. She needed to put together a solid routine. Okay. Jen did a great job. Make sure that you find that focus again, all right? Okay. And to feel it, okay? Yep. If you feel like that again a little bit, squeeze your hands, find okay. yourself. Yep. Ground it. You gotta feel yourself, okay? We're gonna need a lot, a lot of power now. Now we gotta think energy and power. Power and punches. Get that in your mind right now. Here is our leader, Elise Ray. We talked about how talented she is. This is the event where she is not quite as strong in terms of difficulty like the other events. But I have to admit, she has improved a lot here. Her mechanics are good, and it seems to be that her power is building up. This is the Yurchenko with a full twist. And when you look at the overall U.S. team going to China, remember, there will be a Vanessa Atler there, who's one of the best vaulters in the world. There's a Kristen Maloney, who's also one of the best vaulters in the world. And when you mix that complete team together with someone like Elise Ray, the U.S. team looks pretty good going into China. Now for her second vault, Elise Ray. If she does the same as she did yesterday, she'll add another half twist onto this vault, a 9-8 start value. Good for her. Not a really solid landing, but a higher degree of difficulty, and this is where she's improved a little bit. Same type vault, the Yurchenko style. She didn't quite get a very good push off the horse. Her hands were on the front side of the horse and didn't quite get the kind of catapult effect that you would like to get off this horse, which, by the way, happens to be spring-loaded. Most all the apparatus these days is spring-loaded. Even the balance beam has springs. Is that right? Yeah. Alyssa Beckerman score on bars, terrific, 9.637. Dancer put pressure on her, and she responded. Elise Ray's score on vault, an average of 9.256. That should keep her on top. Elise Ray has never won a competition as important as this one. We talked to her earlier about what it would mean to win here and make the world team. Well, I'm not counting my chickens before the hatch, but I really want this. You know, it's it's really something that everything has led up to, and I think just being a part of the team would be such a fun thing and being all together, because it's a world team trial, so it's like a team thing, and team meets are so much fun, and there's a great group of girls, so... Should be really fun. Three women have already secured their spots on the team. Jenny Thompson, Kristen Maloney in the middle, and Vanessa Atler. Now to begin the second half of her the next of all, 16-year-old Milan Dodd in 12th place in this competition. She was also 12th in the all-around at the U.S. Championships a couple of weeks ago. Averaged 8.937 in day one of this competition. Hey, nice going. A little bit better than the first day. A couple of comments from her coach, Frank Lee. This is the Yurchenko style. 9-6 start value because she does a half turn and a laid out front. Good mechanics. Unlucky on the landing there. Now for her second fall. Fault number two for Milan Dodd on the way. Yeah. 
Well done and a good landing. I think she was a little uptight about that ball. You could see it in her face before she went. <laughs> Good job. That was beautiful. Good landing. As you heard Frank Lee say, nice landing. 9-5 is the start value, so she'll get a decent score, not a super high score. Let's go back to the bars. Here is the silver medalist in Atlanta, now, Amy, Amy Chow, Chow, on her specialty. Amy Chow. She has some incredible moves. Watch this sequence here on the low bar. That's an endo. And the second endo was in a mixed L grip position. A move that's named after her. Oh, nice cover. She got right to the handstand. Almost went the wrong way, but saved it. Beautiful. Obviously, her uneven bars routine up to snuff, only limited by her ankle injury on the floor and the vault, really. Nice going. She can do a much more difficult dismount, but she hasn't taken very many landings. Oh, it's only been a couple of weeks, and she's been landing on hard surfaces, so instead of doing what sometimes is a double-twisting double, she did a straight double layout position. She's already got plenty of difficulty in this routine anyway. Here's a young lady that is a accomplished pianist. She's a diver. Two years at Stanford University. She's taking a year off to train for the Sydney Olympics. <laughs> Score for Milan Dodd on vault 9.1. Average of 9.1 for Dodd. Score of the vault. Amy Chow score on bars as anticipated good 9.550 so 9.550 for the silver medalist still ahead Jeanette Antolin on bars more of the 1999 USA world team trials coming up Back in Kansas City for the 1999 USA Gymnastics World Team Trials. Moving right along, Jeanette Angelin on bars. the uneven bars. She was third yeah. at this event at the U.S. Gymnastics Championship. She's good. Oh, man, it's amazing. Don Peters has traditionally taught some really outstanding bar workers. In fact, Years ago, back in 1978, the first gold medal won by an American was one of his gymnasts, Marsha Frederick. Watch this move. She's going to do a very exciting combination here. In the inverted giant position, she's going to go for a laid-out front somersault, and she made it. Now, if she can make the world championship team and do that in China, she has a shot at getting that move named after her. Oh, she went the wrong way in the handstand. Oh. Mm, it's a major error. Tough dismount coming up. Oh, that's a tough break. It's not, uh, not going to kill you. Don't worry about it. Okay? It's a good cover. You did a good job fixing it after you got out of it. Okay? Just a little, let the tap out of hair late. On that it's okay. Hey, don't worry about it. Just go get your hands off the race for sure. Well, I sure love those positive comments from her coach. Don Peters not berating her, but encouraging her to keep it going. This is the move. A laid out front somersault from the invert position. That was the hard move. Now, this move here is a tricky move where she transitions to the low bar, but she got caught, stuck in that handstand, had to go the wrong way, dragged her feet, Kept it moving, didn't fall off, but it's a major deduction nonetheless. Of course, she is very motivated to make this world championship team. In 1997, she just missed. In fact, she was the alternate on that team. 
Now up on the ball, we'll get her score in a moment. Tasha, Tasha Schweiker. Ready for her vault. Got a lot of the qualities you like in a young gymnast. Powerful, graceful. She's got a lot of bounce. Okay. A little sloppy form there towards the end, but high and well done. Here's an interesting story about this young lady. She's just 14 years old, was born on the 21st of November in 1984. It so happens that she was a premature baby by two months. Had she been delivered on the date that she was supposed to be due, she would be age ineligible for these world championships or the Olympics. She was born eight weeks early, and therefore she makes it in terms of the calendar year, in terms of being age eligible to compete in the worlds of the Olympics. They said she was so tiny when she was a preemie that they bought cabbage patch clothes <laughs> to clothe her. <laughs> I heard that. That is unbelievable. Schweikert is in seventh place. It's not out of the question. But with just a couple of rotations left, she needs to hit. You want one more nugget on her? Yeah, I would. Both of her parents are craps dealers at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. My favorite game? <laughs> you spent a little time at that table, haven't you? Ride that pass line. <laughs> Place the six and eight. No. Nine one six two. her first vault score. Okay. Tasha Schweiker. Half on tuck front off out of the Yurchenko position. That's her coach, Cassie Rice. Former gymnast at the University of Oklahoma. She and her husband, Mike Rice, coach Tasha. Well, rotation two is over. We're halfway to deciding the three final spots on the world team. And when we come back, we'll talk to Vanessa Appler about the recent upheaval in her gymnastics career. Stay with us. I want to give you the official score of Jeanette Antolin on bars despite a major mistake. She still received 9.250 bars. And you know what's interesting about that? The scores range from 8.95 to 9.4 for the judges, so they clearly didn't quite know what to do with her. The standings after two rotations, Elise Ray continues to lead. Antolin stays in second place. Beckerman is third. Dancher is fourth. White, Phelps, and Chow. Morgan White warming up. We'll see her very, very soon on floor. We have mentioned that uh, three women have already secured their spots on the team. Jenny Thompson left on the far side. Kristen Maloney in the middle and Vanessa Atler on the right side. A little earlier today, Kim Anthony sat down with Vanessa Atler to find out what's going on. Well, you finished uh, USA's second. Mm -hmm. And since then, you've decided to leave your coaches. What prompted that decision? Um, I was thinking about it for a while. Um, I wanted to be more independent, and I was going through some personal changes, and um, I wasn't, you know, sure I was going to try to stick it out to the world, but after championships, I just, I decided that I needed to leave right away, so. Well, how do you think this will affect your performance at Worlds? Um, it's going to be hard, but I, I think actually it's going to be a little bit better, because I'm, I'm more happy and um, I'm more confident in myself, and, you know, making this move, Show me that I can make this kind of decision, you know, even the hard ones, so. Well, your biggest challenge so far has been being able to nail your bar routine in mm -hmm. competition. Have you been able to make any changes? Yes, I've made a change. Um, I've actually taken out two of the moves that I've been having trouble with. And um, I think it's going to be good because it's just, it was easy for me to learn and um, everything, you know, easier than the last routine that I did. So, every, you know, everything's going good with it. Now, this will be your first time competing on the world team. You qualified, obviously, in 1997, but didn't meet the age requirement. How does it feel? It's exciting. It's, it's a little bit scary, you know, because I just, I can't believe it's taken this long for me to actually get there, you know, because usually you go to worlds, you know, a couple of worlds before you go to the Olympics, and this is my only worlds that I get, you know, so it's it's like a big honor, too, you know, and it's a little scary, but it's exciting, too. So. Well, we certainly wish Vanessa all the best. She had been 
with the Rybackies for about five years and uh, certainly right now with the frustration and the pressure of being that next Mary Lou just a year out from the Olympics. We hope that she finds a happy and productive place for her to train. Whether she goes back to the Rybackies, we do not know. Or whether she finds herself in another situation, we wish her the best. <laughs> okay, when we come back, rotation three, Morgan White on floor. Stay with us. Kansas City, Missouri is Jazz City, USA and has been since the 1920s. The city was home to hundreds of jazz and dance clubs throughout the 40s, and also home to jazz greats, such as Charlie Bird Parker, and the great Count Basie, who performed here in this very auditorium. In the 50s and 60s, vocal combos such as Milt Abel and Betty Miller continued the jazz tradition. And this week, we were lucky enough to stop by the Phoenix Jazz Club and hear Betty Miller's daughter, Betty Jo, keeping the jazz flowing. And if you come to Kansas City, check out the Jazz Museum here and the Blue Note Nightclub exhibit. It will get you in the mood. Now let's get in the mood for more gymnastics. Standings after rotation number two. Elise Ray, our leader. Jeanette Antolin in second. Alyssa Beckerman in third. They would be the team at the moment. Dancer is fourth right behind. Morgan White, Robin Phelps, Amy Chow, and Tasha Schweikert. Annabeth Eberly is up on beam. Eberly is currently in 11th place. At 8-3 and an 8-9 earlier in competition. A couple of things to watch for in the balance beam routines. The gymnasts have to show an acrobatic series of two or more elements. Here is her three element acrobatic series. Nicely done. The judges also require the gymnasts to show a series of dance elements, two or more. Another beautiful gymnastics acrobatic series, which is also a requirement. That rather simple but perilous full turn. Also something, one of the seven special requirements that the judges <laughs> demand. I thought you were going to say one of the seven ways you can fall off the beam. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more than just seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is one of her favorite events. The other is the floor. So far, pretty clean routine for her. Made most of her combinations. Good yeah. double. <laughs> Annabeth Eberly. Yeah. All right, here we go with Morgan White. Out of bounds. 
She loses a tenth of a point for going out. A reminder, she's been battling the flu all week. This is where the lack of juice may show up. A little bit better than day one. Good for her. Bergman White. Good job, Morgan. Good job. You know what? You lost her in the tenth out of bounds, but you picked up a lot of other places. Okay? So feel good about it. The tenth you didn't give away on your first pass. You know what I mean? So it was still a great set. All right, now get a lot of calming down going. Come here, Good comments from Mary Lee Tracy. It's an important tumbling run here. Whip to two and a half twist to punch front. Terrific combination. Several bonus points. The second pass, this double twisting front, under twisted and slightly over rotated, causes her to take a step and then go out of bounds. So in total, that's a probably two, maybe three tenths of a point deduction. Annabeth Everly's beam score is in, and it is outstanding. 9.450. The first day she had an 8.950, so big improvement. Morgan White's floor score, 9.387. Even though she went out of bounds, a solid score. All right, we're coming back to Kansas City, Missouri. We'll take a short break. Alyssa Beckerman on floor, and Elise Ray will perform right after this. Alyssa Beckerman's coach, Mary Lee Tracy, celebrated a birthday here in Kansas City. We had a chance to talk to Alyssa about what she did for her coach on the occasion. For Mary Lee's birthday, I gave her a um, crystal shooting star. With um, it has a candle that comes out of it, and um, just kind of symbolizes this year, because just all that we've been through this year, I feel like it's been like shot shooting up into <laughs> something that I never dreamed I could achieve without her. So she's helped me make it possible, and that's why I gave it to her. Cause I felt like she definitely deserves it. We've heard Mary Lee Tracy and Alyssa Beckerman throughout this competition. They obviously have a close relationship and one that has helped Beckerman improve her gymnastics. She begins her floor exercise in third place, less than three tenths of a point ahead of Jamie Dancher. This is where she struggled in day one. Scored only an 8.862. She bobbled a couple of tumbling runs. Nice start. She sat down on that opening tumbling run the first day. Made it cleanly today. is lovely at five feet three she's just a little taller than most of the gymnasts but the way she carries herself she looks like she's a foot taller than anybody else here it should be a triple fall so we get a nice score the first day she went out of bounds and stumbled on that last pass as well <laughs> <laughs> the last two passes were beautiful. Thank the you. dance was beautiful. They're very good. 
Okay, one more. Listen, you know what? You got you got to get focused pretty quickly. Okay, I mean, yeah. Not, Mike, this is a hyper event. Okay, now you got to get calm. Let go of these three events, but we got to stay in the program for this fourth event. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at this triple full at the end of the routine. Not as high as sometimes. Didn't quite make the rotation around, but she is so good at finessing her movements and her landings. Man, I was... She normally gets yeah. the benefit of the doubt from the judges. Yep. We go back to the beam. Our leader, Elise Ray. The 12th grader at Wild Lake High School. That's in Maryland. This should be another treat. A good place for her to show off her exquisite lines and excellent technique. Nice double turn in combination. you look at her body line, her toe point, and her leg extension, it reminds you somewhat of Lilia Potkopaeva, the 96 Olympic all-around champion who was one of the more complete gymnasts in recent years. Elise has all of those qualities. We've known that about her for a long time, but what we're seeing here that is new is this aggressive, competitive look. I think she likes this new situation. I think that's something she's just maturing into or the coaches have instilled in her. Well, I think the idea of the fact that you saw Kristen Maloney and Vanessa Atler and Jenny Thompson sitting on the sidelines, it's a chance for Elise to shine, and I think she's really enjoying that. Normally, she's overshadowed by those three hot shots. This is a dismount that you see from Svetlana Horkina, the Russian world and Olympic champion. Elise does it beautifully. Next on floor, Amy Chow. Let's check Chow at the moment. She is in seventh place. A remote chance of making it on the team, but a big crowd favorite. This is just so nice to see. Couldn't be happier for this young lady. She already has an Olympic gold medal, a silver medal, but she still wants to be a part of the action here. <laughs> it's my throat, <laughs> <laughs> 
did a nice job of presentation to the team. That's what we wanted to see. Great job. This is a true test of how strong that foot is. This is a tough pass. Whip back through to a full twisting double in the pike position. She landed low. I mean, that's a lot of pressure on that broken foot. She was happy to make it. Elise Ray's score on beam, 9-5-3-7. Had a 9-7-3-7 day one, so she has been outstanding on beam. Alyssa Beckerman on the floor, 9-6-1-2. A great score, and now she is just one routine away from her first world championship team. Amy Chow. Amy Chow on floor, 8-4-2-5. 8-4-2-5 for Amy Chow. We're going to step aside when we come back more. Let's continue now with Jeanette Antolin on floor. At the moment, she is on the world championship team in second place. She is looking to stay there with this routine. Jeanette Antolin. She has a new First tumbling pass is going to be a double layout right to a punch front. She struggled with it in practice. But it's not her nature to hold back, so here we go. Oh, yeah, best one she's done. Outstanding. How nice when day in and day out you see so many cookie cutter type routines in gymnastics, everyone doing the same elements. Don Peters knows it worked. The Gone with the Wind music was terrific for her. That was, that was better than that. Was awesome. Definitely better than that. Good, Good job. job. Excellent. Sure. Good great. job. Just great. Wonderful. That's what we needed, dear. That's what we needed. And that should be more than enough to keep her in the top three. Only a few people in the world who can do that. This tumbling pass, double layout right to a punch front. One of the others is the American Vanessa Atler, who she should join on that world team in China with a routine like that. Jeanette Antolin on floor, utilizing some outstanding tumbling passes. Nine, six, three, seven. Some of the best floor work we've seen from Jeanette. Now we'll come to exercise, Jamie Dancher. Jamie Dancher in fourth place. Remember, once again, the top three make it to the Worlds. She needs to be just about perfect to have a chance of catching Beckerman or Antolin. This music and choreography is in older routine. She went back to this routine. Oh, yeah, nice double layout. She showed up at the U.S. Championships a couple of weeks ago and had the exact same floor music as Morgan White. So she opted to go back to this former routine. Important pass for here, right here. Oh, nice, double full. 
beautiful front tumbling combination. Triple twist here at the end. There it is. Oh, that was spectacular. Beautiful. She has been stringing together some strong scores in this competition. Good job, girl. Oh, that's good. That's good. Is that two on this side again? Oh. Good job, dude. Hey, good job. Boy, there are a couple of powerful tumblers in this building. That layout double back was spectacular. Nice body position. Very quickly rotated, which is the smart way to do that move. This move is exactly the opposite. You don't want back rotation. You want to hang it up in the air and twist it three times around that axis. Boy, did she rock that. On the floor exercise, the Jamie score on floor exercise, 9.762. That could help close the gap on third place. And Alyssa Beckerman, one final rotation left to decide who will be on the world team. We are back at the start of the final rotation. Elise Ray in first, Antel in second, Beckerman third, Dancer right behind in fourth, and Morgan White. Here we go. Game routine of Alyssa Beckerman. All day long, Mary Lee Tracy has talked about focus. This is her moment. Played it safe on that mount. She normally does a combination jump for more bonus points. Made a smart move there when she was a little off. Oh, no. Major deduction, half a point. So close between her and Jamie Dancher now. Dancher also to go on the beam in this final rotation. She scored a 9.775 at the championships. 9.5 in day one of these trials. So she has the ability and the finesse to get a huge score here. The other element, of course, is the pressure. Nice combination. Beautiful full turn with the leg horizontal right into an area. Should be a triple twist at the end. Okay, she made around about two and three quarter, which is kind of typical for her. Good. All done. Let's see, have to see what happens. Okay. okay. All right. You think I'm needed? Mm, I had a question. Okay. Oh, you heard that from her coach, Mary Lee Tracy. Here is a look at the fall, the round off layout. Now, oh, everybody still has to go, so we have to see what they do. They have to go up and do the beam, too. Okay, just sit down and be calm. Okay. Elise Ray on floor is next. She is virtually assured of being on the team. She has led wire to wire. She has been magnificent. Scored a 9.725 in day one here. This routine is just a treat.
Very pretty. Yep, she's going to China with the rest of those young ladies. Kristen Maloney, Vanessa Atler, Jenny Thompson. Take a look at this first tumbling run. This is a triple full through to a punch front. Few gymnasts in the world can pull this off. And she nailed it. And then the rest of the exercise, the polish and the body line, is world class. So with that floor exercise, Elise Ray should have no problem keeping her lead. But during her routine, Mary Lee Tracy explained a different story to Alyssa Beckerman. There's only three, there's only three spots left. Elise Ray, there's Jeanette, and there's Jamie. And if they hit their routines, that's probably gonna bump you out. I mean, that's how close it is. I mean, if they hit their routines, that's, that mistake will cost you. It's just life, you know, it's just the way it is. Yeah, it was. We're coming back. When we do, we'll give you the scores for Alyssa Beckerman and Elise Ray. Stay with us. Final rotation continues in a minute. Elise Ray's score, score for Elise Ray on the floor, 9-6-2-5. A different story for Alyssa Beckerman. She received 8.825 for her beam routine. Very disappointing for her and her coach, Mary Lee Tracy. You're looking at the ankle of Amy Chow. She is scratched from the rest of the competition, her final routine. Ice is on that ankle. Once again, she hurt her foot nine weeks ago, so she's just back in competition. Now, the pressure is on Jeanette Antolin. She is in second place. There are really two spots available on this team. Elise Ray is a lock. Antolin needs 8.783 to stay ahead of Beckerman. This is enormous pressure. As a former competitor, I forget how scary the final trials are. And to do it on the balance beam in her last event. be two back handsprings to a layout here. Aggressive. She scored a 9-4 in day one, so she has the ability to get a big score here. Back handspring, full twist. Straddle. She's not holding back. That's her nature. She attacks every movement. Should be a round off to a pike double back somersault. Oh, yeah. Outstanding under enormous pressure. Don Peters has been there before. This he is, knows how important that is for her. This is what you think. You, just, you didn't make the kick because somebody else screwed up. You made it. That's, a, that's what's fun. See, that's fun. Good job. That was good. Guys, a lot of pressure in your top. When you're in my way, you're top. Just missed in 97. Now she's looking good. Nice move. It's called an Omelian check to a handstand and then around the beam. Taking a kill and going for so much new stuff in one season ever, ever. And it was tough. You know, it was really hard. And it made it a lot harder for you. But it's there. You got it now. You got the stuff. And you can do it. <laughs> what a thrill for Jeanette and Don Peters, as he mentioned. He really upgraded the level of difficulty. She came in here and threw all the stuff and got away with it. Good for Tasha her. Schweikert. All right, let's go back to the floor. Tasha Schweikert. 
if you just joined us or weren't with us earlier, the youngest gymnast in the competition. Normally very consistent on this event. She's a powerful tumbler, but she did fall in the prelims. Double back, wow, nice and high. Now it's on the second pass where she had trouble on day one. Oh. A little bobble in those dance elements. There you go. Twister. <laughs> Tasha Schweikert. Ending with a flourish. Tasha Schweikert. Good finish for her after having three falls in day one of this competition. Nice strong finish. When we return, the score for Jeanette Antolin will have the floor exercise for Morgan White and the crucial beam routine for Jamie Dancher. With the pressure on, Jeanette Antolin came through on beam. 9-5-3-7. So Antolin looks like she's on the team. Once again, the top three go to Worlds. Still to come, however. Now up on the belt. It's Jamie Dancer. Jamie Dancer. Dancer is in fourth. Morgan White in fifth. Both mathematically alive here. And it all depends on two more beam routines. Dancer needs a 9.070 to beat Beckerman and break into the top three at this point. But then comes Morgan White, and she would have a chance. Watch this risky move. Oh, she stayed on. Okay. Oh. Saved it. She's not holding back. Yesterday, she fell on that. Scored an 8 7 7 5. Oh, man. That was very close to a fall. Tell you what's so impressive about this competition is that under this enormous pressure, these gymnasts are not watering down their routines. They're aggressively going for the hard skills, and this will be important for the gymnasts who compete in China. The best gymnasts in the world now are Romania, Russia, China. They need to do this level of difficulty to earn a medal at the Worlds or the Olympics. This should be a triple full at the end. Nice pull. Oh, no. She never really came to a finish, trying to finesse that landing the best she could. She right. thinks it works. Right. Once right. again, she needs 9.070 right. at the minimum to break into the top three. <laughs> trying to make her first world championship team. With a sense of relief on her face that it's over. Oh, it's just <laughs> it's <so> incredible. <laughs> <laughs> this was a clutch move here back handspring full she could have watered down maybe done an easier element she gave away a few tenths of a point without question maybe more 
But the fact that she stayed on the beam might be the difference in whether she goes to China or not. We'll wait to see what the judges do with it. That feeling is not good. Remember it right now, okay? That's what you work for, okay? Come on, Morgan. Our final competitor of the night on beam, Morgan White. Morgan needs a huge score, but she could do it. She needs a 9 8 1 4 to get to the Worlds. Scored a 9 4 7 5 at the championship, so a 9 8 1 4. A tough challenge for this young lady. Front somersault. Solid. I can't remember when I've last seen so many clutch performances back to back. This is the intensity of these final trials. Should be a triple full dismount. Not quite all the way around. She's not going to get the 9.814. But she did do a nice job here. Great competition. Great job. All right, we have finished the competition. Now, who will be the top three to make it to the World Championships? We'll sort it out when we come back. <sighs> Alyssa Beckerman has returned, but we don't know yet if she's going to make it. The score for Dancer on beam, 8.850. Oh, I think that's severe. Now, the judges only gave her a 9.5 start value. She missed some bonus elements. Anytime you have a major deduction on a move that you're going for bonus points, you not only get the deduction for execution, but you also don't receive the bonus points. So she got doubly hit for having that balance bobble on that difficult combination. Well, be careful now. Now remember, she needed a 9.070 to beat Beckerman. So as it stands now, that score won't be good enough. However, for the last few minutes, the judges have been looking at the tape of Jamie Dancher's beam routine. An inquiry has been filed by her coaches. There is a chance her score will be changed. Morgan White's score on the balance beam is a 9. Let's give you the score for Morgan White on beam 9.4. She doesn't make it. Just scant tenths separating the third and fourth spots. See, the problem with that final pass is you're looking there. The judges are analyzing, did she come to a complete stop? You need to stick the landing. She knew she didn't stick the landing. She probably took, should have taken one step and closed, but instead, she kept moving. Now, what do you do with that? She knew she wasn't going to nail the landing, but she didn't want to also take two huge steps and then come to a stop. She put it right in the hands of the judges, and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's between Dancher and Beckerman. Well, Alyssa Beckerman will be going to China with the U.S. World Team. The judges upgraded Jamie Dancer's start value and thus her score by two-tenths of a point. But that is not enough to beat Beckerman. So the top three American gymnasts coming out of the trials, Elise Ray, Alyssa Beckerman right there, thought she was out of it, very, very disappointed, went back into the runway, and when she came out, 
She had worked her way onto the team by two tenths of a point. Let's go down to Kim Anthony. Kim? <laughs> well, guys, um, Alyssa, you just made your very first world championship team, and your meet was going great up until the last event. What went through your mind when you fell? Oh, God. When I fell, I didn't, it didn't hit me quite as I was doing the skill that, that I fell. I kind of just get back on the beam, and I was just thinking, hit the rest of my set, and uh, I better hit it, you know, real good. So uh, that's all I was thinking about was just hitting the rest of my routine. Well, how hard was it to wait for the final decision to be made? It was tough. I was hanging tight in there and crossing my fingers and just praying that uh, I still had a shot. Well, you made it, and congratulations. Good luck at Worlds. Once again, the top three, Elise Ray, Jeanette Antolin and Alyssa Beckerman. Let's go down to Kim Anthony. Well, Jeanette, two years ago, you were an alternate for the World Championships. This year, you made the team, and you had so much pressure on you going into balance beam. What did you think about right before your event? Um, before every event, I just said a prayer to God, and I just went out there and went as hard as I could and tried to do better than I did on Thursday, and it all worked out, so I'm really happy about it. Well, congratulations. Elise, you came out of this meet on top. It was your first major win in a major competition. What do you think about making it to the World Championships? Um, I'm so excited to represent the United States at my first Worlds. So, and we have a great team going in, and it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to it. All right, congratulations to both of you. I wish you the best. Thank you. All right, back to you, Chris. All right, Kim Anthony and Jamie Dancher. What a performance today. She comes oh so close. She will be on the team as the alternate, but she will not compete in China. She ended up missing the team by 13 one thousandths of a point. That's a rough thing to watch. All right. We're going to come back one more time. We'll meet the entire United States World Championship team right after this. <laughs> The 1999 USA Gymnastics World Team Trials have been brought to you by Aussie Hair Care. We do hair a little different. And by Visa, preferred card of the USA Gymnastics Team. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. There they are, the 1999 team that is going to China to represent the United States in the World Championships. Vanessa Atler did not compete here. Petitioned onto the team, as was Kristen Maloney and Jenny Thompson. Beckerman very, very happy. Dancer will be the alternate. A strong alternate, we should say. And she needs to stay prepared, because if there's an injury, she steps onto the team. Kristen Maloney looks terrific. Better than she's looked in a long time. Clean form and better execution. And this way, and of course, Jenny Thompson. How strong a team, in your opinion, will this be at the Worlds? This is an excellent team. The toughest teams in the world right now are Romania, Russia, China. I think the U.S. can challenge them for a medal. They'll need to be consistent, and perhaps the experience that these gymnasts had tonight will help them. That was enormous pressure. I forget how scary the final trials are. Man. We'll have the competition to select the men's team next Monday right here on ESPN. And coverage of the World Championships from China two weeks from tonight. Thank you. Our thanks to Max Groove on the piano for his help with our opening music. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. For Bart Connor and Kim Anthony, I'm Chris Marlowe. So long from Kansas City. <laughs>